Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. Today I would like to talk about the dark side of grit and resilience. When you pound your head against a wall rather than looking for a door. Bill, kick us off. Um, you know, it was interesting in thinking through this because it, it kind of reminds me of, if, you know, if somebody's going down this path, you know, is it an issue of pride versus opportunity? You know, when you're sitting there pounding, pounding away, do you, are you doing it because you truly see that the opportunity is there? Or have you been out of, at it for a while and you're just unwilling to give up and therefore it's creating a kind of a tunnel vision and you're not really seeing that maybe there's a way out and whether there's a way out in terms of an alternative approach or maybe there's a way out in that you know what, let's just completely stop and, and go another direction. So, you know, I think you have to be careful that, you know, grit and really digging in is, is great, but if you don't see kind of what's the opportunity, you may get lost and, and pride then kind of gets in the way and it doesn't allow you to stop. Yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. I've got to say, Robin, when you introduced this topic, I was immediately thrown back to childhood and, uh, a story, a fable, a, 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 I don't know what you'd call it, uh, that I read when I was probably seven or eight about the oak tree and the grass frond. And the oak tree says, you're just weak and thin and reedy and I'm strong and resilient and I can hold up myself to, I can, I'm here for hundreds of years and you just come and go. And then the, the great storm arrives and in the morning, the oak tree is on its side and dying and the wheat stalk is just there going, yeah. Come on, bring it on. Sometimes give is stronger than, resi than resist. Mm. The Aikido really? approach of, of if somebody wants to hit you, just don't be there <laughs> is, is appropriate here, maybe. Yeah. Jim, yeah. what were your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. So, so on this one, there's a possibility that if you were um, hitting your head against the wall, uh, sort of one of two things. One is that you might not be asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And the second is you might be solving the wrong problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, to give you some background on this, I had a few book projects running around a few years ago. And I, I did a little survey monkey to my friends and family to figure out which one I should pursue. Mm -hmm. And I found out that the book that I was most interested in writing was the book that people were the least interested in reading. Oh no. So, so I kind of nipped that one in the bud and kind of refocused my, my energies to solve a problem that people actually wanted to be solved. So and if that's a been good too point. Gritty, yeah, if you've been too gritty, Jim, you'd ended up writing the book out of sheer cussedness. Absolutely. That nobody would buy. It could have happened. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was going to be kind of my next question is how do you know? How do you know if you're being too resilient or too gritty and like banging your head against a wall rather than actually making progress? Well, that's a big old question because we don't know what we don't know. Mm. You know, if, if you're a goldfish and you look up, you see the reflection of what you're in. You don't see the sky. You don't know what's outside the goldfish bowl. Mm. So until somebody kind of breaks the surface and, and changes your worldview, you really don't know what you, whether you're in the right space or not. So to Jim's point, doing a survey and asking people outside of himself was a really good way to get outside yeah. the fishbowl. Yeah, mm. yeah, that may be a place where you need a coach or you need an outside opinion or just some input other than your own ego mm. to figure out if you're even going in the right direction. Because I know yeah. for me, I've definitely suffered from this, I guess, is because I can be really stubborn when it comes to trying to do something. And I know I can do it. I know I can figure it out. And I will bang my head against the wall way past the time where I should have said, you know what, that's not working. Let's do something yeah. else. Well, well, that's the toughness of being an athlete that we talked about in a previous discussion coming out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, you know, just to kind of play, um, agree in terms of what's been said but you know for me especially on the franchise side that i the business that i have i mean it really is reaching out to others because it has been peaks and valleys you know and it's been an, it's been an ever rising peak and valley but it's you, you know you never i've never felt yet that it's hey i've reached the mountaintop and i can see the ocean and what a great view it's just okay there's another there's another peak in the distance and you know, it's, it's one of those things where you, you do need to reach out and say, you know, you're kind of focused on your own business, but it is nice to get other opinions to say, you know, you may want to, 
you know, as you're kind of navigating this place, there may be other ways to go. And it's really critical as opposed to saying, no, nope, it's my market. I know what's going on here and I I'm not gonna listen to you. So uh, as others have said, just seeking out opinions, because that's what they are, mm -hmm. you know, but opinions as to what they've experienced um, really can help in that regard. And it, and it really is a, sometimes, you, it, you know, it's so hard. I mean, Steve, you kind of said to, to kind of pull yourself back and say, how do I view this so objectively? Because, you know, so much is invested. I mean, Jim, you talked about your writing. I mean, you, you're just invested in that. I, I, I can appreciate that. It's like, well, how come they don't like this? This is a great idea. <laughs> it's like, okay. And now kind of reset yourself. Yeah. yeah, And I think the higher up that mountain you get, the harder it is to get good opinions, to get people who aren't guessing you. I think that becomes yeah. more challenging mm -hmm. as well. Because sometimes you have to watch out and make sure that you're actually facing the right way when you climb that mountain. Because <laughs> if you climb the mountain backwards, you can see where you've been and there's a great view. But mm -hmm. you keep on tripping over stuff because you can't see where you're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On some projects, I, I kind of wonder if there's a benefit of setting up what we call a stop loss. Meaning if you put in a certain amount of time or if you put in a certain amount of resources and it's, it's just not working and you're not hitting your mileposts and you know, then at some point you have to say kind of enough is enough. I, I got to cut my losses. You know? Yeah, you got to, yeah. Don't, yeah, don't chase your losses. Absolutely. That's yeah. exactly putting, what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, putting, putting a line somewhere in your mind, on paper, whatever it happens to be. And, and saying, if I haven't made appreciable progress, or if I haven't changed people's minds, or if I haven't sold the project by this point, I'm going to back off. Maybe come back another time. Yeah. I mean, you see that. I'm sure you've all seen the comic where there's a guy, he's digging a tunnel, and he's this far from hitting a gold mine, and he stops and walks away. But, you know, there's also the idea that you could be this far from hitting the bottom of an outhouse. So yeah. at some point you have to recognize like where, where is that line? I think that's a really hard thing when you're in the project or in the business or in whatever you're in to be able to look at that. How do you decide where that stop gap is? Well, I think Jim is probably best placed to talk about this because, you know, what you do, Jim, is, is very much akin to, to gambling. In, 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 I'm not suggesting oh, honestly, you gamble, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's, it's in the same vein. And it's, sure. yeah. you know, I've, <laughs> I've, I lost, I lost on red 20 times. So red must come up next time, which of course is nonsense, but right. knowing when to stop, knowing when, when, to, when your, your losses get to a finite point and you don't just keep chasing and chasing and chasing right. against all probability or odds. And, you know, looking at the risk and reward, you know, what, what is the upside versus what's the potential downside? I mean, I, I think you said that before Jim, and I think that that's yeah. so important that the risk and reward yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, definitely yeah. key. Mm -hmm. So we hear a lot about entrepreneurs, the really the ones that really, really make it, and they talk about how they just push through challenges. And I think that that gives us the idea that grit and resilience are always positive. And uh, I think yeah, that that's a I, falsehood. I think we, we have to be cautious that we hear about these people through media that may be of their choice rather than ours. And consequently, we may only be getting one side of the story rather than both sides of the story. You know, I, I have a, a good friend who's an entrepreneur in the truest sense of the word and has been for 30, 40 years, and she has businesses all over the world. What she doesn't tell you, if you just look at her portfolio, you look at her, her biography, she has the successful businesses on show. She doesn't talk about or show you or put into her biography all the ones in between that failed. Mm. That she took mm. to a certain point, decided weren't going to be f profitable or, or profitable quickly enough, and pulled out. I would love to have a conversation with her of how she makes that decision. How does she know when yeah. this one's not going to make it pull out? Yeah. And I have a friend that, that is a business owner and she's done that a couple of times and I need to have a conversation about how do you know, how do you decide? Yeah. I, I'm a big believer in instinct and gut feel. And I know you're a psychologist and I know that you understand the, the, the conscious versus unconscious versus central nervous system amygdala or the whole thing much much better than i do but i do believe that if you get a gut feel it's because something is legitimately telling you from information that you can't possibly uh consciously manage or, or recognize but something's telling you resilient people don't listen to their gut often enough it's true and i can agree i the same way that is our 10 minutes so i have to cut us off there i won't be able to edit it but thank you so much for having this conversation with me i knew it was going to be interesting and i appreciate you sharing your thoughts 
Thanks, Robin. Thanks, guys. Thank you.